Come on, Joe. Hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Matt and Tom back with you. Welcome to video 400. What the hell? Where did that come from? Less than three years. Thank you so much if you've joined us for any of our adventures so far. Uh, today, we're going to head up to Blackstone Edge. Um, we're going to pass a lot of things en route. It is going to be quite windy. So I'm not going to be doing much of this kind of filming, me stood in front chatting away. Uh, but the objective is to look for another item listed with Robin Hood in front of it. This time Robin Hood's bed. And I'll tell you the story if we find it. But there's a long way to go. So let's see what we can find. So on the way up we found this way marker stone, which if I zoom in you can see uh, there are some letters on it. Um, obviously it's a bit difficult to tell what they are, um, but we think one says Rochdale, and one says Halifax. But you may know differently if you've studied this rock. So the route we've taken up the hill today brings us to this outcrop of millstone rock. This is known as the Basin Stone. Oh, <laughs> okay, so Tom wants to climb it first. Uh, now this stone was the location used for meetings of Chartists. And this particular meeting took place here in 1842 after there'd been some riots in Halifax, and thousands of people gathered here. That meeting is the subject of a famous painting by A. W. Bayes. And the painting, I'll put on a picture of it in a minute. <laughs> Not sure what Tom's on today. Uh, but the painting itself stands today, uh, sorry, is on the wall today uh, of the Todmorden Town Hall. At the top of the rock, there is, basically, a basin full of water. And uh, hence how it's got its name. Beyond us is Gaddings Dam. That's our next destination. The top of these stairs is the first of four reservoirs we're going to walk past today. This one is very well known today. It is the stairs heading to Gaddings Dam, which is often cited as being the highest beach in the UK due to the small strip of sand that you can see in the distance to the left. It is a very popular tourist attraction.
The second reservoir we go to is another we have been to quite recently, and we've filmed here before. Uh, this is the stunning Warland Reservoir, which is obviously much further up the hill. It is my favourite reservoir of all of them on the hillsides above Todmorden. It's just a beautiful location. So we're only here a couple of weeks ago at Warland and uh, on that video, if you look back, um, I mentioned that under here there is an old dragon boat which is a relic from the war that used to put um, rope across the reservoir to stop anything landing here. Um, now the water has gone down a bit more, I don't think we can see the boat but there might just be something we can find. So we're exploring in the water here, and on the rock, just there, there is a rope. Alright. So on this rock here is a chain, which would be one of the chains the dragon boat would have used to move things across the water back and forth but no sign of the boat. It is interesting we can see the chain. Right, okay, so let's leave Warland. Let's get past our next reservoirs, which are White Hazels and White Home, and up to Blackstone Edge. We'll carry on from there. First, we've got to get out of here. <laughs> In the distance, Manchester. sky behind me. Wow. Scary stuff. So we're now at the end of Warland Reservoir. Um, I'm not sure quite uh, what the initial stands for on these, but you can see that uh, 1925 means Warland Reservoir is about to reach its centenary. Uh, Tom is currently under the bridge for some reason. Um, don't ask. Anyway, the next reservoir is this one. This one is the smallest one. Uh, this is called Light Hazel's Reservoir. Uh, and as I say, it's a much smaller reservoir between Warland and White Home. Now, we won't be reaching White Home today because you've got to veer off to the left. That's not the route we're taking. But if you were doing the rest of the reservoir walk, you'd reach White Home and then Withens Clough. So over the hill here, is White Home Reservoir, uh, but we're carrying on this path here.
to reach the top of the hill at Blackston Edge. This is also called, I think, Cow's Mouth Quarry. And there are still some relics of the past here. Um, like these little pillboxes that you can find. And there are bits of um, old concreted buildings across the other side. Also here, uh, you find one of the stanza stones. Um, it's on this rock here, and it's called Rain. It's a poem by Simon Armitage. The next reservoir, and the last one we'll go past today, is Blackstone Reservoir, um, which I have some quite happy memories of, this one. Um, I used to come up here with mum and dad on a Sunday afternoon and we'd park at the top um, where you could get uh, an ice cream from a Royds Ices van, the best ice cream in the world. Uh, now all of the reservoirs we've gone past do have these um, outlets uh, which I haven't shown you on the others and they're all sealed, you can't get in them, but just for interest I will show you what's under Blackstone Edge Reservoir. Spooky. So we're just going to have a very quick stop at the famous White House pub, uh, which is one of the highest pubs around. So after our quick stop, we're heading across the road and back on track up the hill to Blackstone Edge. And all the way we'll keep getting glimpses of Rochdale and Manchester, and then eventually beyond. Look at these guys, or gals. So whilst we've got the drop in the wind, I shall speak to you. Voice over, but we're just on the path above Blackstone Edge, and round the corner here. We're going to find the old Roman road, which we're going to follow up, take up to an old rock that's further up called the Agin Stone, before we head across the top of the moors, where we're probably going to get an absolute drenching looking at the sky. About there is a trick point. That is where Robin Hood's bed is. The sky has been incredible to look at on the walk today. Somehow we've avoided the rain so far. At the moment Manchester's getting a soaking. The lake there, that's Hollingworth Lake. So the weather is just starting to turn on us, just as we're about to turn up the hill and hit the Roman road. If that's what it is, because the road itself was uncovered and described as an ancient Roman road in the 1920s. So it's quite surprising when, in 1965, it was suggested that there was actually a medieval pack horse track running under the road we can see here. And that this particular road only dates back to 1735. So although it's still a very old track, it's certainly suggested now that it's not Roman. So whether it is or not, it's still a very impressive piece. And to think I'm walking on something that's at least 300 years old uh, is intriguing, really. Anyway, our destination awaits. So the weather I was just telling you about has just hit us. Lost one somewhere. Uh, we're so close. They're just behind where we need to be. Uh, so we'll do it if we can't get if we can't film it. Apologies. Still on the Roman road, just above us here. At the top of the Roman road, we find this stone. It's known as the Agin Stone. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. It's a medieval way marker stone from six hundred years ago. It was one seven foot high, but the centuries have eroded it. it. Has a cross on it and travellers might have stopped here 
and said a prayer as they passed along the track. So there's fairly impressive rocks ahead of us. Just need to hope the phone lasts long enough to film it in this weather. But the sun is now shining on Manchester. So, fingers crossed. Okay, the rain's just started to ease off a little bit, hopefully, just before we reach the end of our trip today. But look at this landscape. I'm really sorry that the light today hasn't really allowed me to film properly at all. It's just been very, very grey and dull. You can see how far we've come. Those are the reservoirs over there that we walked past earlier. So here's the trig point and from here in a minute you will see that just where Tom is walking to now that space between those rocks that is Robin Hood's bed. So just a few yards away from the trig point to the left hand side on the ridge of rocks is Robin Hood's bed it's on the highest point of Blackstone Edge now according to folklore Robin Hood once slept here between the boulders and his followers kept guard and it's said that between these boulders in what is a, basically a flat stone suggested for the bed. No wind ever blows here. So we'll put that to the test in a minute. Because this is just one of many uh, Robin Hood related stories uh, for this area. There's a few in Crag Vale, and Brig House and Wadsworth. So look at the difference. Two minutes weather makes. Uh, anyway, this is Robin Hood's bed. As I've explained, between these two rocks and here is the flat bit he's said to have slept on whilst the merry men were keeping watch at the other side. All seven of them. All seven. It's also said that from here, this particular spot never gets the wind, but definitely gets the rain.
I'll lose a little bit if it keeps thinking this is the right place for a Viking base carving. So many rocks here. I don't think I have time to search. Tom's left. He's got to go to an appointment at four. Uh, we suddenly realised it's quarter to three. It'd take us five hours to reach here. Um, so I hope he makes it back in time. So we're just going to have a little look at the rocks here. We'll call it a day from Blackstone Edge. So these huge rocks here definitely give Somewhere like bright stones are run for the money in terms of the size, but you can see these have definitely been used for climbing. <laughs> it's absolutely scorching now. <laughs> scorching and my feet are squelching. What a difference. to climb. Awesome. So at least the weather has allowed us to come and have another look at the Egan stone, uh, in case it didn't really appear last time. And it's now terribly worn. You can see where there would have been um, a cross at one point. I also forgot there was a huge quarry on the way back down. It's certainly a very impressive pile of stone. It should only have been placed there by a machine. There are chunks of the quarry all over. But we'll stick to the path going down, otherwise it's going to be a long uh, look around. I don't know the name of this quarry unless it is purely Blackstone Edge Quarry. But if you know, perhaps you can tell me. Okay, so now we're basking in the sunshine. I'm going to leave you from here at Blackstone Edge, high up on the hill. It's like one of the highest points you can reach. It's basically, everywhere I look, everything is below me from here. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick look, <laughs> occasionally bonkers look, uh, due to the weather. Certainly Robin Hood's bed we managed to film. I'm sorry we skipped past the Aegean Stone and really the Roman road just as the heavens opened. Uh, but yeah, there we go. That is the end of our 400th video on YouTube. Uh, thank you so much if you've joined me from day one. Tell me if you've been from day one. I'd love to know. <laughs> but if you've just started now, hope you've enjoyed this one. Yes, these are kind of the things I wear for these adventures. Um, so, yeah, if it's your kind of thing, feel free to like, comment, share, and why not subscribe? Because there may be another amongst the 400 that you'd like to see. We've lots coming up. We've got returns to Manchester to do. I must finish off my pub journeys and my canal walks. Uh, and hopefully over summer as well, uh, we can get a little bit further afield. No, not too further afield. Uh, I need to look at some folklore on Ilkley Moor as well. Okay, guys, enjoy whatever it is you're doing, and we'll see you soon. From Tom 
and myself. I love you so much for watching. Take care.